All right, everyone, we start off today talking about the farce that's unfolded over the prior months, the general direction of the decline of the United States under you know, the, the wacky system that we're suffering under, neoliberal globalism, and uh, the neocons are the same. We can't even, don't even bother using the term neolib and neocon anymore. They've been effectively, if they were always fused at the hip, now they're basically identical. There's not a whole lot of difference between George W. and Joe Biden at this point, so other than maybe marginal tax rate changes, and those aren't particularly meaningful. Basically, the system we've got right now, and I'll get into some of the uh, things that I'm noticing, is just a dumb oscillation between two things that aren't even poles. They're basically just two uh, uh, Overton window captured uh, false, uh, you know, false dichotomy uh, ideologies that basically are 90% the same. Neocons want to reduce your taxes by 1% while driving the deficit up to pay corporations more money. Neoliberals say, no, 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 we'll, we'll raise the taxes on you by a point or two, and uh, we'll pretend that we want to go after the corporate donors while less transparently giving them a bunch of money. Uh, both sides want to start wars, and, and I use the term sides loosely. Uh, the two sides of a coin are only separated by a, a half a millimeter of metal in some cases. I would posit this. This is my pitch for Trump 2024, uh, the ultimate pitch that I can really give you. It's basically ultra MAGA or bust. We're probably, number one, not going to get another chance at this shy of some revolutionary movement in the future, which, while it could be refreshing uh, to the tree of liberty, might very well backfire, leading to more authoritarianism. We've, uh, you know, If it's led by intellectuals, you have a chance. Assuming that those people aren't malevolent shit fucks, <laughs> look at the academic complex of today. There's a reason for all of those fraternal societies. Um, if we don't accomplish it now, then probably we've just fucking failed. Now, don't be completely blackpilled. If we fail, so populism has the, the uniparty system has crushed populism. It's managed to sort of snuff it out, and, and generationally, you end up with a continuation of the boring old paradigm that you really have had since about 1985. So the, the neocon, neolib paradigm, uh, basically is born then. Aspects of, of domestic and foreign policy had fallen in line with that before, basically starting under FDR, and to some extent under the progressive movement prior, to some extent during the Civil War Reconstruction period, uh, it's layer after layer of authoritarianism, increased globalism, which, you know, the, the global trade is very helpful. Uh, the manner in which it's conducted uh, is, is not particularly helpful. You end up with a system with low upward mobility, relatively limited lateral mobility, uh, in which a handful of people dynastically do very well, and for the most part, other people are deliberately stymied uh, in doing so. I would point out, this ties into what we're seeing with the rise of talk about centralized digital currencies, central bank digital currencies, that is, um, with internet censorship and so forth. It's an attempt to undo the damage to globalism that has been done by the internet more than anything else, at least on the, on the human level. As far as on the political level, here's what I would posit we should do. Throw Trump down the throat of the system and see if it gags and vomits uh, or if it's capable of swallowing it down. By swallowing it down, I mean if it's capable of defeating populism, again, generationally speaking. When I look at Smuggler and, and just the gr basically the gallows humor that you have, it's like it's funny but it's sad at the same time towards uh, prosecutorial misconduct, which we're seeing more and more. Uh, Left-wing terrorist throws Molotovs. They get booked. They get released the same day upon their own recognizance and just wander off to do it again. A 12-year-old gets criminal harassment charges for reacting to a teacher bullying them. We've got uh, a wonky economy that doesn't really work, an out-of-control Fed. The rallying cry used to be audit the Fed or end the Fed. People have forgotten about that. Um, if it, What we should do is nominate Donald Trump. Now, I'm not a Republican, so I don't really care about the Republican Party for reasons that should be all too obvious at this point. Um, but Trump has chosen to throw in with them. I know how he would govern. And when I look at the indictment gate thing, when I look at what just happened with Hunter Biden the other day, we'll be talking about that separately. When we see the dual system of justice exposed transparently, when we see the rule of law begin to break down, 
when any moron could easily see the propagandistic nature of the entire legacy media. That, that, by the way, that's always included Fox. Again, they've just gotten more transparent about it. So look at Brett Baer right now, if you don't fucking believe me. Tucker was just a shot across the bow. Now they're launching a barrage. When we see all of these things together, the slow march towards tyranny, the only thing that I can think of is that because it's single-mindedly focused on destroying populism and understands that populism at this moment is effectively, in a de facto sense, led by Donald Trump, I say we challenge the uniparty system. This is sort of the last charge moment, so to speak. Um, either Trump is prevented from running or they JFK him or something like that, and they will do it transparently because that's the whole fucking point. So the system shows even the normies just how vile it really is. Well, then we've exposed them. That might be helpful over the coming decades as we continue to struggle against globalistic tyranny. Or they fail. Or they find themselves unable to do anything about it. Uh, they're incapable of, of stopping him. And then they have to mount another four-year campaign of nonstop obstruction from within the GOP primarily. Thus again, awakening more normies. Uh, the, the number of people that have woken up to the fact that there is a uniparty system in which deep staters in Intel, in various other bureaus, the legacy media elements of big tech and corporate uh, power in general, members of both political parties, more of them Democrats, although, you know, to be fair, the Democrats also have far leftists that aren't technically part of globalism at all. Or at least on paper. Now, there, there's a deviation in uh, certain foreign policy aspects you may have noticed. Force that system to reveal itself more fully to people. Because as of showing its ass in both 2016 and 2020, more people have woken up. The proportion of the population that understands that the current trajectory of politics is, is clearly wrong is rising. This even takes place among some Democrats right now the lay Dems in New Hampshire are absolutely gobsmacked that RFK Jr., a Democrat with generally liberal views, he's got a few deviations from the main line of his party on issues. He's less taken in by the globalism, actually less of an anti-gunner than some Democrats, to be fair, uh, and, and is honk honk woke on certain medical issues that we can't discuss in this video. He's going to be going and speaking at Porkfest, <laughs> which is a, the Libertarian Convention in New Hampshire. He's going to feature RFK Jr., um, which is interesting. Right now, they're witnessing a situation in which a fifth of Democrats and at least more than half of Republicans, and I would say probably more than half of independent voters, myself being one, are aware of the fact that the system isn't working. Now, they disagree on how to fix that system. Some people say we need socialism. Some people like RFK Jr. wants to shift the window on a few issues and call it a day. Donald Trump, to be fair, is a mild reformer. I said it in the 2016 election, I'm saying it now. If you're expecting him to enter office like a tornado and just whirlwind around destroying all of the toys, that's not what he's there for. He's there to restore an, basically a soft reset to a previous incarnation of U.S. governance that made more sense and worked better. Is it perfect? No. Do I disagree with all of his views? Hell no. No, he was a, he was a good president, not an exquisite president. But it's the best thing that we can hope for right now. You have to take that first step before you can uh, go on a walk. The walk begins with one step. Trump should be seen as the first few steps towards a better United States. Now, he may fail. They could JFK him. He could croak by na of natural causes, in which case every conspiracy theorist will assume that he got JFK anyway, which is you know probably going to be the same for Biden. Well, the, the, the Dems killed their own candidate because they knew he couldn't win. I can basically write the headlines now in my own head, but we've got to try. And anyway, even if we fail, let's say that Trump gets you know wiped out completely in the electoral sense because... Well, they should have known better. He was a weak candidate to begin with. They'll, they'll, the Uniparty Republicans will try to sabotage him, by the way. If you think that Mitch McConnell wants Trump uh, to be his boss again, uh, you, you are definitely more naive than me, my friend. But we've got to try, and even in losing, you kind of rack up a win because the methodology by which they would defeat him is likely to be transparently bullshit. And more people will wake up to the fact that the system is not working, thereby again 
laying the foundation for future moves. You got to think of this in terms of chess, not checkers. It's like a, uh, typically outside groups, they take up a very simplistic and often non-pragmatic line on things. Uh, I would aim this even at many libertarians, uh, which I tend to agree with on many issues, um, that it's just not pragmatic. <clears throat> there is no first step taken. It's just, hey, we want to have a conversation about why I should have recreational McNukes. Well, I think that it's, uh, my gun rights book points this out, it's, uh, it makes more sense to start uh, uh, off by crawling as opposed to jogging. It's a little bit easier to get the momentum up. Maybe you should make other arguments that make sense to people that are more in the mainstream because otherwise you never have the support to have your recreational McNuke memes aside, of course. So I'm going ultra MAGA or bust because anything other than Trump uh, is effectively taking the knee. It's bowing before the deep states. It's, it's playing their game. Well, you can't win the uh, game creator's own game. They're going to they're gonna destroy you. G g cucking out and having a different candidate wouldn't make any sense. Uh, so I'm going to be voting for Donald Trump. Yes, that is including if he's in a jail cell. Um, I think that that's a good idea. What bigger way to say fuck you to the system? You can think of it as a protest vote if you want, be demoralized, or you can actually do something. That's about all. Peace out.